So sometimes the formula they give us, or we are given, is not always in terms of the variable that you, you are m most interested in. So what do I mean by that? So with our formula for Fahrenheit and Celsius, we can plug in the Celsius temperature and it'll give us a Fahrenheit temperature. Um, but what if I had a thermometer that was measuring in Fahrenheit and I needed my temperatures actually in Celsius and I had a whole bunch of them. Certainly we could plug in for the, vari the temperature we measured for the Fahrenheit, the F, and then solve that for C. We could certainly do that. Um, but it might be easier for us if we solve this formula for C, for the Celsius temperature, and then we just have to plug in and compute. We wouldn't have to do any, we wouldn't have to solve this equation every single time. So remember, these guys, even though they stand for really specific things, temperature in Celsius, temperature in Fahrenheit, it's still an equation that relates these two things. And these guys are still variables. So they, it, it's still an equation that follows all the same rules and has all the same properties that we've already talked about. Um, so we can treat it just like an equation. And even though these are variables, we can still solve this equation because these variables are just numbers, right? They, they still follow all the properties and rules of numbers. We just can't do as much with them because we don't know what e exactly they are. So to solve this for the Celsius temperature, the first thing I would do, I, I see I need to get this, my goal is if I'm solving this for the C, I need to get the C, one C by itself on one side and everything else on the other side. Um, and I only want the C's on the one side and just one of them. If I get C's on both sides of my equation, I know something's happened. It's not solved for C. It's, it's kind of, it's gotten mixed up somehow. So what, we're gonna, what we would do, if we had a number on the other side, the first thing we would do would be to subtract this 32 from both sides. So that's what I'm going to do. Subtract the 32 from both sides. And so as you can see, right, the 32 over here, positive 32 and negative 32 make 0, which just leaves us with our 9 fifths C. And on the other side, I just have F minus 32, which is perfectly fine. Normally, if we had had a number over here and we were solving for C like we did in our um, section of, on linear equations, um, we would, whatever this number was, we would subtract 32 from it. But we don't know what the number is, so we're just going to leave it there as F. So it, it's no problem. Um, and then we have to get the C. We want just one C over here. So I've got 9 fifths times C. So I'm going to multiply now on both sides by 5 ninths. But remember, I have to multiply everything on both sides by 5 ninths. So when I multiply this side that says F minus 32, I have to put it in parentheses and multiply the whole thing by 5 ninths. So just like I want, my 9 fifths cancels out and I'm left with 1C. And then on the other side, I just have my 5 ninths F minus 32. And that's it. That's your answer. You could distribute the 5 ninths through to make it... Um, with not have the parentheses, but it would be the same thing. And so that's how we can solve an equation for one variable. Um, so let's do another example just to make sure we've got it. So sometimes, usually when you get one of these problems, they'll give you instructions that'll say solve and they'll give you some um, formula. And they'll tell you to solve it for some variable. Let's solve it for L. Um, so, so this says solve P equals 2L two, two plus 2W for L. Um, this was our formula for perimeter. It could be any formula. It doesn't really matter what it is. It, but it, they all work the same. We can treat them just like they are equations because they are equations. They just have lots of different variables running around in them. So what we're going to do 
um, we're going to solve this for L. So that means our goal is to get 1L by itself. So <clears throat> what we want to do, we, want, we need to move these W's out of the way, right? Because we want just L's on, on one side. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 2W from both sides. Two L plus two W, and I'm subtracting two W. Okay. All right. So two W minus two W makes zero, and so I'm just left with my L's on that side, and I have P minus two W on the other side. All right. So now all I have to do is get the L by itself, and so are one L by itself. So to undo the multiplying by two, I'm dividing by two. But if I do it to one side, I have to do to the other side. Um, all right, and so my over here, my twos cancels, leaving me with just one L. And I have P minus two W over two. And that is my answer. So the length, if I had the perimeter and the width, by taking P and subtracting 2 times the width, and then taking that number and dividing it by 2, I would get the length. Um, it's really tempting to want to cancel these 2's here, but we can't cancel these 2's. Because remember, canceling out is removing factors of 1. Um, and if we did that, uh, we wouldn't be removing a factor of one. A factor would have to have, you'd have to have the whole thing multiplied by two for that to work out. Um, so we cannot cancel, if there's an addition or a, a subtraction in the numerator or denominator, you're kind of stuck. You can't do any canceling. So that is solving equations for a given variable.